Time. That man is Louis Antoine from Trinidad and Tobago. Hey, Louis! Louis Antoine! Louis Antoine! Come here. Caribbean insight. Really is dynamite. Caribbean insight. Really super. Was spite. Caribbean insight. Enjoy day or night. Caribbean insight. This is the movement of our people, our history, and our culture to the world. Right about now, next comedian coming on stage. Wife was abusing him. He get put out twice. He's still on the street hustling. We ain't know what's wrong with him or what's going on with him, but we're going to find out tonight. Show some love for Louis. Antoine, give a round of applause, man. The next man come here, I take in he. Good night. Good night. No, not this one, the next one. Good night again. It was until now. You're looking for your band. What band? I know Theater Thomas, so it has just like you. Mister, I am not a masquerader. So why are you wearing a costume? This is not a costume. This is a statement. Well, that costume may contain one thing. Halloween. Look, if you're not buying, just keep it moving. What, what, what are you selling? What holes does sell? I, I don't know, I never buy none. Sex. I'm selling sex. Um, I, I can take one. A dollar? Yeah, you can keep the chain. Mister, look at me good. You see anything here that looking cheap? Other than your clothes? I just charged $200 an hour. Two hundred. Two And what, what could be for five dollars? Two doubles and a solo by Ali's. I have five dollars and sixty-five cents. That is two minutes and forty-five seconds. It could take me two minutes alone just to take off my clothes. Uh uh, don't take off your clothes. Why? I, I don't want to change my mind. You know, you fast or you real fast. You see this body? Yes, that is why I don't want you to take off your clothes. You lucky tonight is a hard night, you know. Otherwise, I wouldn't even talk to you. You lucky you talk to me, otherwise, yeah, I'd never get this five dollars and sixty-five cents. <laughs> Look, let me just go. All right, come go. Wait, 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 where we going? Duh, to the hotel. All right, but pay for a room with air conditioning, right? Because I don't like fun. Wait, excuse me. 
I say I don't like fun. No, no, before that. I say to pay for a room with air condition. Mister, you is the one who had to pay for the room. But I now give you my last five dollars and sixty-five cents. So then, let me just go on by you then. No, nah, we, 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 we can't go by me. So, where you was living before that? With my father. <laughs> but he said, he told me he wanted his space. So, you pack and leave? No, I put on my stepmother. But... Okay, hold on, hold on. Oh, where does go when you want to have sex? Uh, to sleep. <laughs> to sleep? Yeah, to sleep. You know how much people like sex in my sleep already? <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Hold on, hold on. Darling, you trying to tell me you never had sex? Uh, uh, yes, ask when we fit really. I'm so sweet that we call him daddy when I sleep it. <laughs> Oh gosh, darling, dreaming is not sex. He's a virgin. Not when I'm sleeping. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> I... I never had a syphilis before. That's gonna be my first time. Boy, you want a STD? Yes, I, I want that. And I blows up and I woes fall. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> hold on. <laughs> Where is it? You want a STD? Yes. A blow job? Yes. And a rose fall? Yes. For five dollars and sixty-five cents. Yes. Well, darling, the only thing you can get for five dollars and sixty-five cents is crabs. <laughs> All right, all right. I can take that and Mr. Fellas. What the? Well, let's see how that negotiate. Wait, like brains is a rare commodity wrong here. Yeah? Yes, on, on the half year we have it. You know what? This is making no sense. Keep your $5.65. Go buy a snow cone or something. Hey, but... 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 but, but a... What is your problem? What is your problem, boy? Oh. You know, if I had time to waste, I would have just screw your brains out. But it looked like somebody beat me to it. <laughs> well, let's see that. She wants to screw my brains. Oh, God, look at tourists. Ooh. <laughs> <coughs> Uh, hi, baby. <laughs> you want to take me back to your hotel room? The two are we, yeah? No. Wait. No. Leave. Me. No. Miss. Mr. Let me explain. No, no, no. no, no wait. No, no, no. Mr. Let me explain. Let me explain now, please. Oh, go oh God. You see now a real back. A real freaking mad. <laughs> yes, we still in here no room. I'm all this time, I could have made $800. With one to it? You know what? You is living proof that a man can live without a brain. You know what? I gone from here. That is nothing. I saw I could find another one to give me syphilis and crab for five dollars and take it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care what none of all they say. I'm going back to Trinidad now. Somebody tell me that when you're in New York, once you mind your own business, nobody would be shoot you. Well, I just mind my own business. So when I see them fellas shooting, me and Bada to run. Everybody else running, but I sit them right there in the car. 
because I know I don't mind my own business. When I get the first shot, I push my head out of the car for it to hit me. Because I feel like take one for somebody else. You know them people shoot my again? I was going to come out of the car for it to get a better look. But I drive off. If I was in Trinidad, I would have never get you. Because in Trinidad, them fellas that shoot straight. But in New York, if they're shooting at you, just don't move. And the people are wrong here who have to run. Because them fellas that aim at you, and shoot everybody else. <laughs> now what I don't understand about New York is how come you could have one phone number for two different people. In Trinidad, ambulance have their own phone number. And the police have their own phone number. I get shoot and I die in, in New York. So I call 911. You know them people send the police? <laughs> I say, officer, it's I who get shot. You know the man call for backup? shoot me. He said, and where they gone? I said, I don't know. They probably leave while they're pointing a gun at me. <laughs> when the ambulance finally reached, it didn't make no sense. Because I tell the woman I get shoot on my shoulder. She put a brace on my neck. <laughs> What about my shoulder? She said, forget that, that don't move your neck. <laughs> but I must congratulate Kings County Hospital. Because time I reach, let me get a round of applause for Kings County Hospital. <laughs> because time I reach there, they had everything waiting. But nobody couldn't find a doctor. <laughs> so I start to make my peace with God one time. I said, God, you remember the time when I didn't bring that girl home by me and I tell her that was my cousin and we wasn't going to do nothing? Well, I lied. That was my girlfriend and we was going to make sex. And God, I know you can get back to this one, eh? but you remember this Sunday when I tell you I was going to church? Don't get back, sir, but I went on the beach. <laughs> I had to tell him the truth. You can't lie to God when you're dying. <laughs> I hear people say, when you see the light at the end of the tunnel, to run from it if you want to live. But I find out that it's not the light at the end of the tunnel where it's kill you. It's the big truck that's it on. <laughs> you have to run from it if you want to live. 
When I wake up in the hospital, a doctor stands up over me. He says, sir, we have some good news and some bad news. Which one you want first? I said, doc, I will take the good news. He said, the operation was a success. I said, and what is the bad news? He said, you have two bullets in your shoulder. <laughs> I said, so what operation was a success? He said, he was up to me. Now I always know police was stupid. <laughs> but I always thought that detectives would have been a little more smarter. Eh -eh. Police is police. <laughs> the man see me in hospital with my two arms swollen so I can't write. A tube in my throat so I can't talk. The breath they put around my neck so I can't nod. <laughs> but he just wants to ask me a few questions. <laughs> the man even charged me for withholding evidence. That is why I sell all my clothes to buy a bulletproof vest. Because gunmen go on a street. When I was in recovery, they put me in a nice little room with an old man and to have a nice little button right there to press to call the nice little nurse if you want help. But what was nice? is that nobody didn't tell me that the man had amnesia and they just cut off his two legs. So every time he forgets he don't have no foot, he just jump off the bed and hit his stones on the go. The button right there. He and the gum, I and the bed, the button right there, and none of we can press it. <laughs> and let me tell all this something about that sponge bath. They doesn't use no sponge. When the nurse tell me she's going to give me a sponge bath, I say, okay, nothing wrong with bathing in sponge. When I see the basin of water, I thought she was going to wash her hand. When I see the rag in it, I say, well, she's going to wash her hand clean. And then I find out. I don't understand how come they just call it a sponge bath and they wetting people. <laughs> That's not very nice, but one thing I can say about the hospital is somebody may say they'll be very willing. They'll be very willing because that is one particular nurse used to come to work early every morning and find them other nurses just to give me a sponge bath. <laughs> yes! My partners and them say, boy, you were lucky. But I couldn't tell them as a male nurse. go to all of that just because gunmen go on a street. And I'm telling you something. I'm telling all this something and I don't want all this to tell nobody else. I don't understand. You see when somebody in hospital 
and people come to visit them, it has hurt more when you ask them stupid questions. <laughs> you don't go to visit somebody in hospital and ask them how you're feeling. <laughs> I remember this one visitor asked me, she said, let me ask you a question, I hear you get shoot. I say yes. She said, tell me something. When you get shoot, it has hurt. I said, no, I just like to lie down on the pavement and scream like a girl. <laughs> but the most stupidest question I ever get, the dumbest question, come from a doctor. The doctor pressing on my wound and asking me on the scale of 1 to 10. <laughs> Tell me how much is the pain. <laughs> so I kick him in the stones. I said that much. <laughs> this hospital was an outline to tell all you. I see a nurse running on a man with a base now, hot water. The man running on a jeep running him down. The doctor said, hey, what are you doing? She said, doctor, I'm doing what you tell me to do. The doctor, tell, the doctor said, what? I didn't tell you to do that. He said, doc. The doctor said, I tell you to prick the man boil. She said, oh, I thought was to boil it. <laughs> so you see me? That is why I sell all my clothes to buy a bullet for vest because gunmen go on a street. And it's only happening where? On CIT. And I'll be right back with much more. As you know, I'm the Lord Kitchen. And I'm um, having a wonderful time here with, with Caribbean in Insight. I think it's a wonderful organization. And I hope you will do as I do. Keep listening to them. You see you? I ain't lying, boy. You stupid for two people. Yes, Tommy, you and your mother. This is Rootsman. This is Sunel Dempster. My name is Winston Bailey, better known as Shadow. This is Calypsonian Squeezy. I watch no other but Caribbean Inside. Caribbean Inside. Ready is dynamite. Caribbean Inside. Caribbean inside, enjoy day or night. Caribbean inside, really is that. We're gonna continue with this blowout, and the next performer coming on stage, another Caribbean brother representing the island of Jamaica, Yaman yeah, Root Boy. Who? Oh, uh, uh, you from Jamaica? No, you're the Trinidadian. Anyhow, they look like they have something wrong. Yeah, yeah, like they make a change around. You looking kind of different, boy. Who is you? Well, talk to me now. If you don't make, all right, there's not arm from Jamaica. Tommy, I need some glue. You have glue? You want some glue? What the hell you want glue for? I need to stick back a mirror. You know why you're too damn hard? You have no right to look in it. <laughs> I need some glue, I need to stick my camera. I hear them say when you break camera, you just get seven years bad luck. But sometimes I just feel like I break a whole glass factory. <laughs> it's ten years now I have been seven years bad luck. Nothing does go right with me, everything does just go wrong. The other morning, I go into work. I take the wrong bus. The driver make a wrong turn, end up in the wrong place. Cuff me in my mouth for telling him the wrong word, and I still get fired for reaching to work the wrong time. <laughs> That's not 
done right and just wrong. I even get married to the wrong woman. In one month, I lost my job. I lost my wallet. And not for hell, I can't lose my wife. I don't just pray for my seven years bad luck to over quick just for she to leave. I tell you, nothing does go right at me. Everything does just go wrong. I don't even have the wrong dreams. The other night, I dream. I making love to my neighbor husband. That is not my dream. That is my wife own. <laughs> Sunday morning, I sit in the home in my house watching my TV just so courts come and take it back. <laughs> and I did by <divide> by standards. <laughs> Even T and Tech does do me wrong because it has post light bill for all my other neighbors, but it has bring mine when they come into cut the light. <laughs> I tell you, nothing does go right with me, everything does just go wrong. Even my children come out wrong because my daughter likes to play football. And my son does model Victoria's Secret. <laughs> I don't even shop in the wrong place. They don't sell me the wrong clothes. Look, right now I have on the wrong outfit. <laughs> because the stuff is supposed to be blue. Nothing does go right with me. The other night, I sleep in good, 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 good. Just so I dream four. Next morning, I get up. I run down to the racetrack and bet $400 on the fourth horse in the fourth race. You know, when the race started, the horse run in the wrong direction. <laughs> Nothing does go right with me. Everything does just go wrong. Even the police wrongfully arrest me. I say, officer, you have the wrong man. I was home all night. I didn't know I was home the crime take place. <laughs> they tell me I have the right to remain silent. And then they beat me to talk. They locked me in a cell I didn't like. Charge me for something I didn't do. And beat me when I tell them I didn't know. And when they give mama one phone call, I dial the wrong number. Nothing does go right with me. Next morning, I went to court. The magistrate charged me $300 to pay one time or six months in prison. I say, Your Honor, I'll pay the $300. When I dip in my pocket, I only have $299. <laughs> and nobody don't want to lend my dollar. Bad lucky when I reach in the cell, all them other prisoners have a man, and not for hell, I can't get one. (laughs) 
I tell you, nothing does go right with me. Everything does just go wrong. But a partner mind tell me that he used to have the same problem. And he went by an Obia man. He said the Obia man bathed him with lucky oil and money oil. He said, man, you talk about luck if you see money. So I went. <laughs> Ask the Obia man, I said, excuse me, sir, you have oil? He said, yes. I said, just bathe me with it. You know the man bathe me with coconut oil? <laughs> Man, if you see coconut, <laughs> oh, when I leave there, as I walk along the road, when I bend the first corner, I find a hundred dollars. I say, but this thing working, boy. When I bend the second corner, I find two hundred dollars. I say, but it's over your man real good. You know, when I bend the third corner, I get robbed. I just went straight home. <laughs> I'm telling you, nothing that's go right with me. Everything that's just go wrong. I want to clear up one thing here tonight. I mean, get put out, eh? I leave. <laughs> I mean, I see man in the house, but it's only someone licks a man can take. Every minute she only hitting me, hitting me. I'm not your child, I'm your husband. Sometimes when she hit me so, I just want a ball. But the neighbors gonna know it's I who got in the licks. No, 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 don't get me wrong. Any woman, I can I can hit she back on her. Mama needs somebody to hold she to and behind she back. <laughs> How do you think I just feel being the only man in a meeting for battered women? <laughs> Them women always talking about domestic violence. Them don't know what domestic violence is, you know. Domestic violence is when you come home and meet a man on top of your wife, on top of your bed, and on top of that, you just ask you for a pillow to sleep outside on the couch. And you get legs. <laughs> she tell me that when she hit me, it has hurt she more than it has hurt me. I said, well, why you don't save yourself all that pain and just let me cut your ass instead? They say what goes around comes around, but you know how long I wait until see somebody cut she ass. I, the other night I come home and meet she and a man on the bed that my grandmother gave me. He was lying down on top of she on she side of the bed. So I was going to lie down on my side of the bed. I wasn't going to bother nobody. She tell me to sleep outside on the couch. Next morning I get up, she gave he breakfast before me. When I go in the bedroom, my bed mash up. 
Now I get real damn vex. Oh, me get vex because I sleep outside on the couch. Me get vex because she get eat breakfast before me. Me get vex because they mash up my bed. But you know what get me mad? A man wake up in my house. My own house. And he didn't even tell me good morning. I hear them women and them limited for battered women talking about fighting back. So I went to him and tried it. And she hit me. I hit she back. Well, like the last thing I remember. The other day I asked she, I said, baby, how come you doesn't tell me when you're having an orgasm? She said, because you're just me home. <laughs> this is a serious thing, and all you're laughing. <laughs> the other night, she running me down to hit me. So I go on under the bed and I, she said, come out. I say, I'm not coming out. She said, come out. I say, I'm not coming out. She said, come out. I say, hey, I see my new house. And if I say, I'm not coming out, I'm not coming out. But wait now, she put me out. I mean, I, I leave. <laughs> and I forget to wash the wears before I go. <laughs> now, is she going in that kitchen and find them wears in the sink? <laughs> She'll come outside of here in front of this crowd. Oh my God, that could be called domestic violence. <laughs> what should do, boy? Wash my wears. Crowd domestic violence. Wash my wears. You see me? I's a big man, right? So let me just go home and wash my wears. And next time I carry the, a girl on a beat in Trinidad, Maracas beat, and pack up the car, we are going to make text. <laughs> and I kiss you and tick to say go lower. A kissy on the chest to say go lower. A kissy on the belly to say go lower. I say, all right, all right. So I start up the car and carry it down last way, boss. You know they say what goes around comes around. Cause I was robbing people all the time. And you know the other day some fellas rob me? <laughs> I was walking along the road and them walking up the road. And that's uh, them start to fight me, so I fight, man, I fight, I fight, I well fight, I fight them down to the ground. They must stand up and I was on the ground. <laughs> And one of them puts his hand in my pocket and take my money. He said, two dollars? Two dollars you fighting up so far? I said, no, I thought all was coming for the 600 in my suit. <laughs> so they take that too. But then I realized, not because I'm unemployed, I have to work people. Because one of my brothers is a cane farmer, and he teach me how to plant cane. But I don't want to be a cane farmer, I want to be a chicken farmer. 
to buy a thousand chicken. You know, not one of them get big. I don't know if I plant them too deep or too far apart. And it's only happening where? On CIT. And I'll be right back with much more. And you just have aliens don't have penis, that is true? Yeah, that is true. So all you have sex, that like that. This is Ruth Smart. This is Sunel Dempsey. My name is Winston Bailey, better known as Shadow. This is Calypsonian Squeezy. I watch no other but Caribbean Insight. Caribbean Insight. Ready is dynamite. Caribbean Insight. Really super. Was spiked. Caribbean Insight. Enjoy day or night. Caribbean Insight. Really is dynamite. <laughs> I don't know what he gets in on so far. He just back if my girlfriend can come here tonight. <laughs> and not my point, she ugly. Every time she walks outside, she does at the same time. Because every time she walks outside, don't just rush it to fight. <laughs> I think I didn't plan to be a two-pie you, eh? But when I see Spider-Man become a two-pie you in New York, to have them for it to just get their own crook. I decided to become a two-pack you in Chimda to help with police because they don't catch nobody. <laughs> but I noticed all them other two-pack you had something in common. Because Spider-Man working for Daily Bugle and Superman working for Daily Planet. So I went to look for a job in Daily no daily bread bakery. <laughs> and you might tell now there are no vacancy. I tell now vacancy are looking for that job. <laughs> if they were, if they, how good you was with do? Well, when I was more like to make vacant things, I tell you what you're going to do. If they are right, well, do come back here. <laughs> I'm no longer happy. <laughs> but I got to buy away a cut of that to buy what so, so I watch them and I start to fight them. I can get the fight. You don't have a fight, you can feel it. Well, it, he wiped one outside. He said, Stop, stop, you're gonna kill him. I said, No, man, I'm teaching him a lesson. He said, Not you, I was talking to my husband. <laughs> I didn't get that job. And I had to become a full-time superhero. But before that, I got a nice little job working for a tiny man, a tiny man named Mr. Wong. All I had to do was sit down in the office all day and just answer the phone. So I then Mr. Wong called me in the office. He said, since you start working here, I stop getting phone calls. <laughs> you saw you don't answer the phone properly? I said, of course I didn't answer the phone properly. Anybody call I didn't just say, hello, wrong number. It's them who just hung up for themselves. He said, I thought I tell you to stop making overseas scores on my food. I said, I never make overseas scores on your food. When I have overseas scores to make, I just unplug your phone and plug in my <laughs> I'm not a man for you, I'm not for nothing. <laughs> that is when I become a full time to buy you. The first person I went to say is that old lady who stand up on the side of the road. And nobody is stopping for the cross. So I lift you up. I don't fall in that traffic and drop it quite on the other side. And when I beat you, the old lady started to beat me to Ambala. 
I tell you why you do that for? You say, you know how long it takes me to be tacky on that? <laughs> and next time, I see a man snatch a woman put it on the one. So I want him down and I take it back and I bring it back to you. You know what I bring it back to you? It's not one handbag. I said, what you do that for? He said, you have no right to be in Spandex. <laughs> and next time I went to save a woman who was chopping up a 10 story building. And the building burning. So I went up to the, I tell the fireman, I tell my wife, I say, so I went up to the building. I said, jump! If there's a 10 story building, I can't jump if I jump back a dead. I said, I well, jump in the two men pool. The woman jump in the two men pool. You know, she's still dead. <laughs> now, I don't know what kills me. But I thought she didn't jump because the pool didn't have no water. And was a bad neighborhood, so I went to help him. I said, What happened? He said, I get a flat tire. I said, So you can't drive the car though? He said, If I drive the car too, I go run off the road. I said, Why? He said, Because all four tires have to be the same thing. So I bust the other three. <laughs> I don't know what you are getting on those stupid car. You can't see you're running away. I know people that run away on foot. I have to run away on my belly for she bad. <laughs> and I don't like to crawl. My knee's still blocked from when I was a baby. <laughs> but I have to leave. And not turning back. <laughs> Unless she catch me. <laughs> the last time she catch me, she said, where you going? I stay right back inside. <laughs> she feel like when, when, when she have vex, she does beat me to leave. When I leave, she does beat me to come back. <laughs> and if I ball, she does beat me to hush. Relics passing, and I get an all. <laughs> she feel like afraid, she but me and afraid she. And what I afraid, I afraid trouble. Yeah, that is what she named, she left hook. <laughs> and the right, the right is worries. <laughs> trouble and worries. Last year, last year I went to Soka Monarch. When I reached back home, she grabbed. She said, who, who sent you out? I said, nobody. Money man on the radio keeps saying show in Winchester and you. So I didn't want to disappoint nobody. And she's so damn ugly. <laughs> she have a face to advertise condoms. <laughs> Use this to prevent that. Father tell me how he, he daughter is a treasure. I don't know why the hell he didn't bury it. <laughs> I, I meet she on Facebook. But that wasn't she face. <laughs> she 
The Petia look just like Rihanna. But in real, she just looked like Nana. <laughs> she made Black Stalin look like a nice man. <laughs> I said, she, she, I married, she had gone point. <laughs> She father say, his daughter getting married today even if he have to kill somebody. <laughs> and I was the only person around. <laughs> I should have be careful what I ask for. Because I asked she for she hand in marriage. <laughs> And that is exactly what that is get. She hung in this marriage. <laughs> for as day, I see all them other wives cooking for the husband. So I just ask she. <laughs> if I could taste your hand, please. <laughs> That day I get macaroni pie and baked chicken. Yeah, mommy, bring it for me in the hospital. <laughs> All my neighbors and them tell me, they say, boy, you should leave the woman before she kill you. Go back by your mother. So I went. You know, she come down there. And she beat me for staying by mommy. Then she beat mommy for letting me stay by she. Since I small, I always see mommy doing the beating. First time I ever see mommy get beat. And everything happened so fast. When I see she lift up mommy, so in one hand, I say, let she go and take me. She bought her half you already. <laughs> you know how much times I try to fight she back? But I never get past stage one. <laughs> and this is stage one. I even went and learned karate. And the day I get my black belt, she beat me for wasting time. <laughs> <laughs> me, I'm a sensei too. And she, she can't even carry a message. Yesterday she going down the road, so I gave she money to buy a bottle of rum for me. She come back home with makeup. I say, e excuse me. <laughs> you buy my rum? She said, you don't need no rum, but I need makeup to help me look good. That is the same thing I wanted the rum for. <laughs> and nobody don't like she, not even she here dressed her like she. She says she always buying weave and she don't have no hair to sew it on. <laughs> and she, she have a cousin staying by me. I don't like he at all. He staying by me. And I just had to sleep on the couch. <laughs> she tell me his good manners to give him my bed. And she's still sleeping on it. <laughs> now, I don't mind. I don't mind she and he sleeping on my bed, right? But when me and she were sleeping on that same bed, I never used to have that bed squeaking so <laughs> I just 
I'm sleeping in night is only squeak, 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 squeak. <laughs> I even tried to stay in a shelter. But they put me out because I was the only man there. <laughs> and mommy, mommy afraid to take my back. She says she don't want no more trouble. <laughs> oh, wait now. I'll run away. And I don't have nowhere to go. <laughs> we, only ex excuse me a minute, right? <laughs> yeah, hello? Yeah, Mavis? <laughs> yeah, Mavis is me. Mavis, I was thinking. And I want to give you one more chance. <laughs> No, my this is not me. I wasn't saying nothing about you. It's them people outside here who are trying to break me up. <laughs> yes, my best. No, my best. I know my legs. <laughs> no, my best. I don't feel mommy my legs neither. I could come. I could come. All right, my best. I come in. Yeah, yeah my best. I come in now. Yeah, my best. I'm running. Only I go on. Yeah, my best. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Good night. Oh, let's see, I joined the police service, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't want to be a police, but I didn't have enough passes to work in KFC. <laughs> I try all kind of things before I come become a police. I, I, I was doing odd jobs for people. I used to go all around there doing odd jobs. And one time I pull up by the town and I tell her, man, I tell you, may you have any work to do? He said no. I went by the town, I tell you, my turn, I'm seeking some employment. He said no. I went by the town, I tell you, man, I'm looking for, for some employment. Man say I could paint, I say yes, sir. He said all right. He said, see the town, I want you to paint the town, sir, man. I say well, all right, I can do that. He said, but I don't know how good you can paint. So I want you to go outside and paint the porch first. He give my bucket of paint and a paint bus. Half an hour I come back inside. He say you finished? I say yes sir. He say you paint the whole thing? I say I paint the whole thing. You know, but that was not... B that, that, that was not porch. That was a BMW. <laughs> After that, I got a job as a teacher. I was teaching to them. Yes, and, and, and yes, I was teaching to them. And I was teaching them about, about, about Down syndrome. I say that some people are able to make decisions for themselves. If they make decisions, they make the wrong decision. And when they talk, they don't say the wrong thing. I say, what we'll call people like that? I let the boy raise his hand. I say, yes. It's a politician. <laughs> Every day I used to make some kind of pie for them. Every day. And they used to like to guess what flavor it is. When they make a terry pie, all of them taste it. I say, guess what that is? They say, terry. Next day I make pineapple. I say, guess what that is? They say, pineapple. Next day I make a honey pie. I bring it. All of them taste it. I say, guess what that is? Nobody don't know. So I decided to give them a hint. I said, it's something your mother does call your father. A little boy say, oh, they don't eat that, that's his asshole. <laughs> But some of the other, I just feel that like the commissioner I don't like me. Because he gave all them all other old police officers gun. He ain't give me none. He gave all of them battle. He ain't give me none. He gave all of them bulletproof vest. He gave me a hand. <laughs> and he tell me to work in the worst area in Trinidad, Lavantel. He said, 
I want you to stand up right here and anybody you see going to suit somebody, tell them you can't suit nobody here. <laughs> so I see two fellas go and suit the next fella. I say, hey, all you can't suit nobody here. But I point the gun at me, I say, over there have a dark spot. <laughs> The other day I reached the work 9 o'clock. My boss telling me, say, hey, he say, you know you should have been here at 8. I say, why? What happened at 8? <laughs> I called him in the morning and said, sir, I can't come to work today because I'm feeling sick. He said, that's a no excuse, man. He said, when I'm feeling sick, I just have sex with my wife and I just feel plenty better. Next day I come to work, he tell you how you're feeling. I say plenty better, sir. He tell you take my advice. I say yes, sir. And I find you have a well night out. <laughs> but me and my wife have plenty problems, right? Yeah, we have problems because I feel she blaming me for the father death. See, see, father was in the hospital dying, and he had tube. They put a tube for him to breathe in. And as I went to look for him, and I turned up next to the bed, and I hold his hand, and, and I talk to him. And, and, and he tried to tell me something, but he can't talk. So he wide down something, and he gave me a note, and I put it in my pocket, and the man dead. <laughs> when I reach home, I pull out the note, and open the note, say, you stand up on my oxygen line. <laughs> So we just had to go by the counter every day. I, I tell the counter, I say, you know what, I say, I want a divorce because she, she doesn't give me no time to say nothing. I say, she always cowling, 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 cowling. And while I tell him that, she starts to cowl. How you know I always cowl and I say, I want to cowl and I always cowl and I always and I say, I say, you see what I'm talking about? The counter gets up. The counter holds you and gets you in the mouth with tongue. And then he lets me go and sit down and see and say nothing. The counselor says, see that? She need that at least twice a week. I say, all right, I can bring it Tuesdays and Thursdays. When me and see was going to get married, I know it was going to be too. Because from time we start to get married, it's hard problem. See, sister called me a day to help see with the invitation. And see, sister, we are in a tort, tort kit, and see, sister looking nice. <laughs> and see, sister start to come on to me. See, sister said a long time I watching you. And I want to make text with you one time before you're married, my sister. Man, I kept her the tear was sitting down on. Sister said, listen, if you want my upstairs in my bedroom. And she going upstairs. In the thought kit. I run down the corridor. I open the door. I run out the front door. I want to wait down the driveway. I want to wait up to my car. When I reach up to my car, I see mother, I see father, I see sister, I see brother. All of them turn up around the car. He tell you that good man. The father take my hand. He tell you that good man. You could marry my daughter any time. Because you won from temptation. <laughs> See, mother said, but you could have break your foot. Where you going with all that speed? I said, become a condom in the glove compartment. <laughs> when she get pregnant, and we go into the hospital for to make the baby. Doctor tells me, pussy, pussy, baby, put out the head, he watches the doctor, he says, use my daddy. <laughs> doctor says, no, baby, pull back the head inside. Doctor calls the nurse, the doctor says, nurse, nurse, come and see that. Nurse turn up right there, the nurse says, pussy, pussy. 
baby put off the head, what the nurse say you my daddy? No say no, the baby pull back in the head. No, but the doctor would tell me that when she's pregnant, have sex with she every day. So when she go in and have the baby, it's going to be plenty easier. So then the doctor call me, the doctor say, hey, stand up right here. I stand up right here, he say, put. She put, the baby put off the head, he watch me. Say, you my daddy? I, I, I say, yeah. He say, come. He say, closer. Closer. This is how it does feel. I go. Thank you for checking out CaribbeanInsideTV.com and visiting our store. Remember to wear your mask, take care of yourself and each other. Your contribution is vital to the Caribbean cultural revolution. Thank you for watching. I would have to ask you to leave, please. Right, that is correct. I will have to ask you to leave, please. Well, leave when you're ready. You don't have to ask me to leave. It's all in the name of humor. So I just want to say thanks to everybody for their prayers and support during my ordeal. I want to thank everybody very much for your support and good night.